sport of boxing. With me now is boxing coach Honor Avara and Peter McKay from the Brain Injury Association Headway. Honor, many outsiders will see boxing and think in this day and age, should people really be encouraged to punch others about the head? Well, we're talking about a sport that's got 700 million fans throughout the world. That's 10% of the world population. So there are two effects. One is the kind of eradicating a big industry. The second one is that you cannot stop. It's in our blood. It's in our human nature. What will happen? The boxing will go underground. Then the effects will be much more dangerous. That's, that's, a, that's what I a fair point, but perhaps not about the industry side of things, because there's been plenty of industries that have come and, go, come and gone over the centuries, Peter. But the fact that a lot of people support it, and if it was to be banned because of incidents uh, like this, then it would just carry on underground. Well, you say that, but um, the same comments were made when people talked about introducing a ban on fox hunting. People said they would just continue to do it. They'd disregard the law. The same sort of thing was said that if you ban smoking in pubs and in public places, people will just carry on. But generally speaking, people obey the law in our community. And so I think if a law were passed to protect people, that it would be obeyed. And if it's not, then it needs to be enforced by the people that we but, pay to do that. But that's that's a little bit naive, isn't it? Plenty of things carry on, even though they're against the law. I mean, badger baiting, for example, we know still goes on, even though it's, it, it, you know, it's, it may be quite reprehensible and is against the law. Dog fighting. But it's, exactly. So they still go on. So it would carry on if it got banned as you wanted to be. But right now, there are still bare-knuckle fights that go on. Right. So, you know, is that a, a reason for saying we're not going to protect people from what we've just seen with Mike Terrell? He's lost his life. A two-year-old is without a father. His partner is without him, um, and that's awful. But there are so many boxers that end up sustaining a, an injury that causes them a lifelong disability, and that's where we come in as headway, because we have to pick up the pieces. There. Wendy Moore on Twitter echoes what you say on early. She says she hates boxing. She agrees it's a huge sport, and I doubt it will ever be banned. Many people follow it. Look, it doesn't seem likely it's going to be banned anytime soon, but some improvements surely have to be made. Now, one thing that keeps cropping up is how boxers dehydrate themselves to get down to a fighting weight. That's surely got to change. That's 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 right. The, the, I know some incidents that the boxers or the other fighters, any, any combat sport fighters, they lost eight kilos. This is, we're talking about over a stone and five pounds, six pounds of weight in three or four days in order to make the weight. This has got more effect than actually being punched in the face. On your head, so it should be more regulated. More monitoring should be be in place. So there are um, there are some uh, platforms that you can actually be watched. So if they follow the athletes and the clubs that they're affiliated, be a part of regulated governing body. Yeah. Then if they follow their rules and regulation, which is preventative rules and regulation, they're more likely to be more protected. But at the same time, Peter, we see in the Olympics, which is amateur boxing, for the first time, the male boxers are not wearing head guards in the Rio Olympics we've just seen. And no one has got an explanation for that, but surely that goes runs counter to what would be safe. It, it makes no difference. The head guards are, are not effective. And so, I mean, what, what we need to understand is Dehydration is extremely dangerous, but a punch to the head is extremely dangerous. What happens is that the blow lands this side and the brain moves inside the skull and it collides with the opposite side where the, the blow lands. And during that period, there is a stretching and a pulling and a tearing of blood vessels and brain matter. And that's what does the damage. Just finally, on them, I mean, when you hear something like that, there's no way of making it safer. It is. It, it, there, there are making it safer than what it is. So with the head cards, according to research that uh, it's been carried out over the years, that the effect, the impact has got less damage without, without the head guards okay, okay. than the head guards. So this is safer version of this. If you can't ban the sport, if you cannot stop people... Uh, boxing, then you can only make it safer. Well, that's the only way can. to stop, uh, to make boxing safe is to stop people punching each other in the head, and that's what's so dangerous. I'm afraid we're out of time on this, but gentlemen, thank you both very much indeed. Thank you.